my name is Chelsea Barabas. Um, I'm just waiting for my slides, but the, the talk, um, the title of our talk is called Studying Up, Reorienting the Field of Data Science Around Issues of Fairness, or Issues of Power. Um, so I'd like to start first with a quote from Einstein, uh, who said that if he had an hour to solve a problem and his life depended on the solution, he'd spend the first 55 minutes determining the right question to ask. As academics, so much of our power lies in how we formulate the problems that we aim to solve, in formulating the right question. And today I want to argue that the Fat Star community has not taken enough time to develop the right set of questions in pursuit of fair algorithmic systems. In spite of our best efforts, data scientists still lack the conceptual tools necessary to grapple with key normative aspects of their work. And as a result, we often reproduce ideas which normalize social hierarchies and legitimize violence against marginalized groups. In our paper, we challenge data scientists to uh, move beyond these default modes of operating in favor of studying up. So in this talk, what I'd like to do is first introduce this concept of studying up as, as it was initially explored in the field of anthropology. Uh, then I'll draw parallels between that conversation and contemporary debates that we're having here in the Fat Star community. And then finally, I'd like to illustrate what we stand to gain by studying up, uh, by drawing on a case study from the work that me and my coworkers have done uh, over the last couple of years. So the idea of studying up was first introduced by an anthropologist named Lauren Nader in the early 1970s. Nader argued that anthropologists harbored a myopic predilection for studying the downtrodden, uh, people who are conceptualized as members of isolated cultures in distant lands. Nader pushed her fellow anthropologists to reframe their subjects of inquiry in terms of relationships that extend, quote, beyond the ghetto. Now, Nader's use of the term ghetto here is intentional. A ghetto is defined as an isolated place, segregated from larger social structures. The call to study up was a call to contextualize traditional field sites in terms of their relationships to broader institutions and cultures of power. By studying up, Nader meant that anthropologists should expand their fields of inquiry to include, quote, the study of the colonizers rather than the colonized, the culture of power rather than the culture of the powerless, the culture of affluence rather than the culture of poverty. Like the anthropologists of the 60s and 70s, data scientists today have been confronted by a series of controversies which illustrate the various ways that our work is entangled in larger political and social struggles, which illustrate, um, uh, sorry, but it's given rise to this community that we're all taking a part of today under the rubric of fair, accountable, and transparent systems. Within our community, though, the default tendency is still for data scientists to cast the gaze down, to focus on the relatively poor and powerless factions of society. This tendency is particularly widespread amongst projects which, which self-identify as AI or ML for social good. This downward orientation holds widespread appeal because it creates discursive ghettos around marginalized populations via statistical discourse in ways that disconnect their plights from structural forms of oppression. It's what happens, for example, when we use arrest data to try to measure an individual's criminal proclivities as opposed to trying to measure systemic bias in policing practices. This tendency is due to the fact that data science, as our previous speaker just noted, is often predicated on extremely asymmetrical power relations. Those with the resources necessary to collect and analyze data often have overwhelming incentives to ignore the problem, precisely because addressing it poses a threat to their dominance. Nader's mandate to study up was a call for her colleagues to deal directly with issues of power and domination in their work. And it's time for a similar provocation to be made within the field of data science. As Nader argued, quote, if one's pivot point is around those who have responsibility by virtue of being delegated power, then the questions change. Reorienting data science to study up requires us to ask different questions. But studying up isn't easy. It requires us to develop a critical reflex when presented with opportunities to build models based on data that's been collected by powerful institutions. Now I'm going to very briefly draw from some work I've done with an amazing group of interdisciplinary researchers who are up here. 
Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to go into all of the things that we learned. Um, but what I can say um, is the work that we did was largely based on the public debate regarding pretrial risk assessments in the US. Um, and one of the biggest challenges, um, actually, no, we're not going there yet. Actually, as many of you probably know, uh, pretrial risk assessments have become one of the prototypical examples that we use to grapple with the ethical stakes of contemporary algorithmic systems. Um, but the ethical debate regarding these tools has uncritically accepted the premise that the best way to deal with mass pretrial incarceration is by modeling the behavior of some of the most disenfranchised individuals in American society those who are facing the threat of pretrial detention. Now, this framing prevails, even though it's judges who are ultimately responsible for making the decisions that have driven mass pretrial incarceration. Current efforts to render pretrial risk assessments more fair allied more fundamental issues about what to measure, who to, whose behavior to change, and who to study. Studying up for us required us to surface insights regarding past, present, and future trends in the way that judges make bail decisions. So we decided to approach this from three different angles. The first one was an insider approach, wherein we negotiated with the state government to gain access to data that we could use to analyze trends and judge behavior. The second was an outsider approach, wherein we supported grassroots efforts to collect data that the state wasn't willing to share in order to support public accountability campaigns. And finally, we took a speculative approach, wherein we designed a tool that flipped the script by subjecting those in power to the very methods that are typically used in pretrial risk assessments. One of the biggest challenges that we faced was regarding access. Negotiating insider access required us to carefully navigate requests to conduct studies that we ultimately declined to carry out because we decided that those studies would actually do more harm than good. Our outsider approach also proved difficult. Data collection is a very labor-intensive process, and the data we were able to collect with a bunch of volunteers wasn't great. So as a result, um, we took a more speculative approach, wherein we designed a risk assessment tool um, that actually measured the likelihood of a judge um, posing unaffordable bail for a defendant. It's no, uh, noteworthy to say that our risk assessment is far more accurate than any other risk assessment on the, the market today. Most pretrial risk assessments hover in the mid-60s range. Ours is upwards of 80% accurate. Um, and like other pretrial risk assessments, our risk assessment um, is driven by demographic information, such as age and marital status. Now, judges would probably balk at this notion that we could predict their behavior based on demographic information. And they would especially find problematic this idea that we're framing their behavior as being criminal. Um, there are a lot of problems with our tool. It's not actually intended for everyday use. But as a thought exercise, um, we think that this tool can be very powerful because it re re reveals forms of stigmatization that are embedded in this technology. So in conclusion, I just want to say, I think we need to study up. It's going to be hard, but I believe we can do it. Thanks.